Don't try to sell. Don't try to sell. Don't try to sell. <laughs> you have three options. You either become a doctor, you become an accountant, or you become an engineer. And I killed it. I like absolutely killed it. And then Willamette came back and said, we're gonna give you a full scholarship, right? So it was just time for me to challenge myself. I was born and brought up in Bombay. I grew up in a typical middle-class family where education is valued over everything else. And as children, we, we were told that, you know, you have three options. You either become a doctor, you become an accountant, or you become an engineer, right? Pick one. I picked engineering, don't ask me why, but I, I think it worked out okay. Did my engineering and then moved to the US for my MBA. Our entrepreneurship journey started with my mom because she actually started a business and in a year she did so well that she ended up actually convincing my father, like the reserved guy, to actually quit his job and join the business. Academics up until MBA was hard for me. Before, you know, he had his own business, you know, dad used to work at a supermarket or whatever. So from time to time I used to go there and I used to sit at the cashier and what I started doing without really realizing it is that I used to start having conversations with these customers who were coming through and upselling them. And I'm like, hey, you know, why don't you buy a couple more chocolates and things like that. To put it in growth X terms, it's like, you know, I was increasing the, the ACV of my, of, my, <laughs> of my customer, right? So I started doing that and folks, at the store and they were like man you really have a knack for talking to people and making connection and i was like yeah i actually like that i couldn't see myself sitting in a cubicle coding so what i ended up doing is i was like okay i have to do an mba and then willamette came back and said that hey you know what you did so well we're gonna give you a full scholarship and we'll give you a on-campus job and i was like Sold. Right after MBA, I ended up working at a startup in Portland, Oregon itself called Vigilo. I, I bombed at that because never worked really in my life, right? I mean, working at a storefront as a, as a cashier is very different to working as an analyst in a startup. While I bombed, I think it was great because my boss there really helped me understand what it means to work and take ownership. And the second one was at Eight Center, where I was employee number two. No idea what we're doing, had never worked in healthcare. But again, like I think just the most amazing set of bosses who threw me into the deep end, but were very patient. At Eight Center, we had a, like a big finalist presentation for the solution that we were selling. My boss at the time, uh, our CTO, he's like, Robin, you're going to do the demo. I was like, yeah, sure, you know, it's cool. I remember very clearly standing in that room, getting ready to present and there's about, I want to say like 12 people in the room and I'm wearing a suit and I literally start sweating and not like, you know, just a, a bead trickling down here, like literally just drenched in sweat <laughs> and I, had, I, I don't know what, what's happening. So my boss is like, don't worry about it, it's fine. Just take your jacket off and go for it. I was like, okay, cool. So I do that. I start doing my demo. My computer crashes. This is a finalist presentation, right? And uh, I may have just cost my company like a few million dollars worth of the deal. I don't know what to do. Like, I literally have no idea how this works. Like, you know, when this happens, what do you do? It was amazing to see uh, my boss sort of, he's like, all right, you know, why don't you sit down? He stood up and he just started to have a conversation with these people. And we actually still won that deal. A week after that or something, all, of, all three of us are, are sitting uh, together in a room and they're like, uh, what happened to you will happen, has happened to each and every one of us. It's okay to feel bad, but also know that you're not the only one who's gone through that. What is important is that you learn how to deal with these situations. We moved back to India after Well Talk. And when I came back, it was it was more like, you know, I just, I, I wanted to come back home, be closer to family and things like that. And then, you know, before you know it, we had the pandemic hit. So virtual selling became even more commonplace and salespeople couldn't necessarily just wine and dine their way to a deal anymore, right? So their product had to shine. That I think for me was in kind of the perfect storm that I'm like, okay, you know, I, I think we have to build something that will make these amazing sales reps even more successful, help them close more deals, uh, help them hit quota. You know, that's kind of what led to building SmartQ. SmartQ helps sales team create a library of demos based on buyer personas, use cases, industries, with the objective of delivering very tailored and contextual product demos to their prospects. Uh, what that helps sales teams do is get their buyers to the aha moment faster and inevitably reduce or compress the sales cycle. That's what I've been doing for just about a year now. I quickly realized that, hey, you know what? Okay, so 
I think I can have some conversations. I can even sort of drum up some business because of my network, but that's not scalable, right? How do you scale? How do you actually build a sales funnel? How do you build a pipeline of leads and conversations? You know, that question led me to look around and, you know, I, I found GrowthX, you know, I had conversations with AP and I realized, like, yes, I have no idea what this is. But I realized that this is something that I'm really going to need sooner rather than later. So when I started to raise my pre-seed for SmartQ, I started to put the word out in the community and two members from GrowthX who had never met, just based on my outreach, based on a couple of messages back and forth, we hadn't even spoken on the phone when one of them said that, okay, I'm going to invest in you. And that kind of just blew my mind. To take it a step further, he's like, you know what? I'm going to bring my co-founder in and I'm going to ask him as well to invest in SmartQ. The community here really rallies around each other to help, to learn, to grow. We're starting to sign up a bunch of clients and now we're ready to sort of raise a, a seed round, right? So, so we're raising a seed round as we speak uh, and I'm hoping to close it by like March of 2023. That's what's next, like growth right? Scaling and, and, and going to market uh, with SmartQ.